In this video, we will talk about statistical quality control. Now, in this presentation, we discuss about the statistical quality control, its application, construction, and limitations. To utilize material and human resources economically and to produce good quality items, we may employ statistical quality control. Quality means fitness for use of any item and it is inversely proportional to the variability. The main task of quality improvement is the reduction of variability in the process and the products. The variation may be caused either by factors which can be controlled or by those that are natural to the process. Variations are of two types, assignable and common. Now, assignable variations are caused by factors that can be clearly identified and possibly even managed. For example, variation caused by improper input materials or by improper machine adjustment. Common variations are also called random variations are inherent to the process. Assignable variations are caused by assignable causes or special causes. Common variations are caused by common or chance causes. Chance causes are inherent, random and not controllable. If only common causes are present in the process, then the process is considered as stable process. Now, assignable causes or special causes are variation of due to external influences. If such a causes exist in the process, then the process is considered as unstable process. The reasons for such variations are as follows. Instrumental, say tool wear, machine vibration, material, say quality of raw material, environmental, say temperature, pressure, humidity, human resources, for example, performance of worker, physical, emotional experience, knowledge of the employees. Now, for process monitoring, sample is collected and statistical quality control, that is SQC, is applied. The ultimate goal of SQC is to detect and eliminate the variability in the process. In SQC, samples of the process output are collected and then statistics are calculated. The distribution associated with the sample is compared with the actual distribution of the process. Both should exhibit the same kind of variability. Hence, any non-random changes in the process are detected quickly by applying SQC and we try to identify the reasons for the change. Now we can see the process. Now we can see the process. It says start the process, take sample, inspect the sample, pre prepare control chart. Now if assignable clauses are there, then stop the process, search the reason, rectify the process and restart the process. But if assignable cause is not there, then once again take the sample and, and the process will continue. So every time we have to follow these steps to check the process or to check the products continuously. It is normal for a process to exhibit non-zero variability. For example, if the required value of a dimension of 5.00 cm, the design specifications might be 5.00 plus minus 0.02 cm, implying that even though the aim is to construct exactly 5.00 cm, but anything between 4.98 and 5.02 cm is also acceptable. Such design limits are often referred to as the upper and lower specification or tolerance limits. A control chart is a useful technique to monitor the performance of a process over time. It is a time series plot of a statistic, such as sample mean, sample range, sample standard deviation, or sample proportion with a central line or CL to indicate the desired standard by 5.00 cm from the above example with an upper control limit, so with an upper control limit and the lower control limit and the lower control limit describing the process spread plus minus 0.0502 cm. Say if it is a 5 cm, so we can say it is a plus 0.02 minus 0.02 cm. So this is the tolerance limit of the product. So anything specification, anything in between this, it is acceptable. We can say that a control chart is a pictorial representation of hypothesis testing where the null hypothesis is that the product meets the requirements. The desired range of values for the statistic is obtained from the limits. 
the chances that a process may be out of control are high if the statistic is outside the limits or when its time plot identifies certain non-random patterns. Important use of control charts is to discover assignable causes. To monitor the output, we use a control chart of the statistics like the mean, range, standard deviation and proportion. Usually two control charts are used to monitor a process, the mean chart or the variation chart. Occasionally, a sample is collected and the data are plotted on the control chart. So long as the sample points fall within the limit, within UCL and LCL, there is nothing to worry about the process or the products. But the, if the sample point falls outside the control limits, so for example the seventh point of the figure, then it is considered as da danger signal indicating that the assignable causes are bringing about variation. So you can say if the data is in between the range, then there is no problem. Okay, so if it is in between the UCL and LCL, then there is no problem. Okay, so nothing to worry about the process. But if it is outside the limit, so then it considers a danger signal indicating that the assignable causes are bringing about the variation. There are two types of control chart, variable control, control chart and attribute control chart. Variable control charts, these charts deal with items that can be measured, for example, weight, height, speed, volume, temperature, etc. The variable control charts are X, X bar, R, MR and S charts. Attribute control charts. These are used to monitor characteristics that have discrete values and can be counted. For example, percent defective, number of flaws in a shirt, etc. The attribute control charts are P, NP, C and U charts. Now we can see the types of control charts. So if the if it is variable, if n is small, go for x bar and r chart. If n is large, go for x bar and s chart. If n is equal to 1, then go for x and mr chart. And if it is attribute, if it is defects, to know the defects, then a and if n, if n is constant, go for c or u chart. But if n is variable, then go for u chart only. But for, but for defective, to know the defective, if n is constant, go for p or np chart. And if n is variable, then only go for the p chart. Control charts can be used for one or more of the following purposes. For controlling the process, for predicting the expected range of outcomes from a process, determining the stability of a process, analyzing output patterns of the process variation from special causes or common causes, determining whether the quality improvement project should aim to prevent specific problems or to take fundamental changes to the process. Here we discuss the general steps to develop statistical quality control as follows. Step 1. The decision of attributes, their units, data collection methods, sample size and frequency of samples are made and an initial control chart is set up. In step 2, data collection, calculation of appropriate statistics and plotting of statistics on chart are done. Step 3. The trial control limits are determined and compute central line, UCL and LCL. Step 4. The results are analyzed and interpreted. It is determined if the process in, is in control, eliminate out of control points and control limits as computed if necessary. Step 5. We use the control chart as a problem solving tool that is continue to collect and plot the data, take corrective action if necessary. Now benefits of statistical control. The benefits of statistical quality control are as follows. Easy to apply, very efficient, reduce cost and time, early detection of faults and cost effective. Now applications of control chart. Application of control chart are as follows. Estimate the parameters of the process. That is we can estimate the mean variation of any process. To determine the capability of any process to meet the specification, to improve the process, that is we can improve the profit by improving the process. Control charts can detect assignable causes and we can adjust the process to reduce waste. Improve productivity by continuous monitoring of the process. Effective in defect prevention, which means lesser scrap, lesser waste and more profit. 
to prevent unnecessary process adjustment and thus help in reduction of workload. Set of decision rules for detecting the status in control or out of control of the process. The process is in control if the data points are inside the limit and the pattern is absolutely random. So you can see here the data are within the limit. Okay. But and the patterns are random. Okay. The process is not in control or assignable causes may present if one or more data points fall outside of the control limit, two or three consecutive data points fall outside the two sigma limits but still inside the control limit, four or five consecutive data points fall beyond the one sigma limits, six data points fall in a row steadily increase or decreasing manner, an unusual or regular pattern in the data, eight or more data points fall in a row both just above or below the center line. Now you can see the example one by one. One or more data points fall outside the control limit. Okay, so one or more data point. So this is what? Uh, it is out of control process. Next, two or three consecutive data points fall outside the two sigma. Okay, so if it is a, if, if it is a two sigma, so it is a three sigma. These three, are, these two are the three sigma. Image. These are the two sigma. So two consecutive, two or three. Okay. So two or three. So if it is a three sigma. So two or three are fall outside the two sigma. Then, but sit, but still inside the control limit. But still, still it is inside the control limit. But it is more. It is above the. It is below the two sigma, or it is above the two sigma. Okay. So hence we can say. It is, uh, uh, it is out of the process, it is out of control. Four or five consecutive data points fall beyond the one sigma limit. Okay, so we can say it is one sigma, two sigma, three sigma, one sigma, two sigma, okay, one sigma, two sigma, one sigma, two, two sigma. So if it is more, more data beyond the one sigma limit, above or below the two sigma, then you can say it is the process is out of control. Six data points fall in a row, steadily increasing or decreasing. Okay, so six data points fall increasing, decreasing or increasing in a row. An unusual or regular pattern in the data. Okay, so we can say, or if it is like this, so it's a regular pattern. Uh, in the next video we will talk about different charts and that is the end of this particular video thank you very much